Hey guys, I've been looking forward to this lecture. This is kind of part two of a sort for a lecture that we had uh, a while ago. Uh, and the lecture in question is the one where I talked to you about uh, biological addictions, how drugs have their addictive qualities. Um, Biological addictions work the way I described, but there's a whole other class of addiction and it used to bother me as an undergraduate. I would hear people say that certain things are psychologically addictive. And I always said, what the heck does that supposed to mean? Psychologically addictive. I get biologically addictive. I get that. But psychologically, are you sure? Isn't that just an excuse for like doing something stupid uh, repeatedly? <laughs> and uh, Eventually, I kind of came to understand psychological addiction and, and how it works. And it's a really great example to fit in with this chapter. So what I want to do is kind of take you on the journey that I that I kind of went on um, and, you know, give you a good sense of what psychological addiction it is. And yeah, how it all relates to behaviorism and, and therefore how behaviorism is so relevant to our current world. You know, even though we're not all that behaviorist anymore, the things we learned during the behaviorist era continue to, to have relevance uh, and we draw on them quite heavily. So we'll be able to make that point too. All right, let's do it. Start here. Schedules of reinforcement. Now you've read about this, but let me, um, let me quickly kind of take you. I'm going to mostly focus on these two in, in a moment, but I'll, I'll touch on that too. Uh, but let me give you the concept again. Uh, the concept, just so we're all starting at the same place, is well, let's imagine we have a rat in a Skinner box. And if that rat presses the bar, he's gonna get a reward. Eh, but not so easy. We're gonna set some, what we're gonna call schedules of reinforcement. And, and the first way to make you understand this concept is just to start with the fixed ratio. It's the easiest. Fixed ratio says, sure, you'll get a reward for pressing the bar, but not every bar press. You have to press the bar 10 times. If you press it 10 times, then on the 10th press, you'll get a reward. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, reward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, reward. All right, and uh, and so that's what we call a schedule of reinforcement. We're scheduling when to give this rat his reinforcement. And by the way, what you see when a rat is learning this way is he's, this is the number of responses. Remember that cumulative response. This isn't quite as clean as it should be, but I talked to you in the previous lecture. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and every one of these is when he gets rewarded. Eight, nine, ten, and he gets a reward here. And then what you see is he takes a bit of a break uh, while he's eating his reward and chilling out. And then he gets to pressing ten times again. Reward comes, he takes a break. And so you get this sort of step-like function uh, of this sort. And we can look at the sort of rate of that, like how overall, how quickly is he responding? And we say, oh, he's, yeah, he's responding pretty well. Yeah, over there. Okay, but here's the critical concept for this lecture. Comparing that fixed ratio with this variable ratio. So first of all, what do we mean by variable ratio? What we mean is this. We're still going to have it on average. On average, it'll be the case that the animal will, will be rewarded after 10 presses, but it's not going to be every 10th. Uh, it may be every 10th, give or take five or even let's be more extreme, give or take eight. Um, and so it could be the case that this, this rat maybe has to press 14 times for the first one, but then only twice and he gets another one, and then 12 times and he gets one, and then six times and he gets one. And on average it's 10, but it's variable from one reward to the next. And when that happens, the rat doesn't know when the reward's coming. Here he does, he knows, I'm just gonna put in 10, and he goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Gets his reward, takes a break. Here, after every reward, because sometimes, look at these two, there's a reward, and then not long after that, there's another reward. Because that sometimes happens, then yes, the, the rat gets a reward, but they wanna start pressing again, uh, right away. Because sometimes there's a reward right there. And if there isn't a reward right there, then they get this feeling, well, it's, oh, it's almost there. It must be coming. It's, oh, oh come on. How, how, <laughs> how long is this going to take to get this reward? But they have this feeling like the reward is always around the corner. And what that leads them to do is keep responding. And what you see here is a much stiffer slope, right? If you reward the animal in this variable way, they respond much quicker than if you are much more... Um, 
not quicker, higher frequency, more vigorously um, than they do if you have a fixed ratio, okay? There's mojo to randomness, to the randomness of this reinforcement. It, and, and it's a powerful mojo. And that's going to be the core thing I, I want to tell you about. Now, just before I, I just leave this graph, because there are these other two lines here. Um, these are about, you, you'll, yeah, okay. Let's, let's, let's do a little bit about it. This is kind of funny. Uh, th these are the same things, but applied to intervals rather than ratios. So what do we mean by that? So a ratio means we're going to reward based on the number of responses. So many responses leads to a reward, and it's either fixed or variable. But it's the, it's the counting of the response that governs when the reward happens. With an interval, a reward is given after some period of time if the animal is responding at that time. Okay, and so I'll, I'll make this make sense. We'll start with the black line, the fixed interval. And this is what I call the really stupid boss condition. <laughs> so imagine you're working in cubicles in a place and there's some manager who's got an office down the road, uh, down the thing. And um, this manager knows they got to keep an eye on you because if they don't keep an eye on you, you'll be checking out your social media and being distracted by YouTube videos and all those sorts of things. But he's not a very smart manager. And so what he does is he sets a little alarm so that every half an hour, um, it reminds him to go and take a look and, and see what you guys are all doing. So every half an hour, on the half hour, he pops out of his office and walks around, takes a look, looks over everyone's shoulder, how are you doing, whatever, and then he pops back to his office and you won't see him for half an hour, okay? What do you think might happen in that situation? So same idea with a the rat. They're, they're given a reward after some period of time. And it's a fixed period of time um, if they're pressing the bar at that time. Okay. And so what's the rat do? They slough off. They do nothing until that time's coming. When that time's almost there, they start responding, respond, 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 respond. And then they get the reward and they relax and chill out for a while. And so in human terms, uh, your boss comes by and you look busy. Boss is coming. So you're sitting there working away and looking as busy as you can. And then he goes into his office and out comes the phone and off you go. Um, for a while. Until about oh, five, five minutes before-ish, I better start looking busy again. And then you get busy and busy and busy. Okay. So that's a fixed interval. And well, what would a smart boss do? A smart boss would, would make sure they were popping out at unpredictable times. So a variable interval, not every half hour. When that happens, you eliminate these little dips in performance because the people uh, don't know when you're coming out. Same thing with the rat. When the rat doesn't know when the, when the reward is, again, this variable gets them responding at a more you know, strident rate, uh, stickier rate. So something very powerful about variable rewards. I hope that helped you understand schedules of reinforcement too, if that wasn't clear. But there's another side of it too that's, that's really important when we get to psychological addiction. And that's what we call extinction, right? And you, and you heard about extinction. So what happens if you've trained a rat up according to one of these schedules, which they're kind of also representing here. Um, notice they flipped the VI the other way. It's just starting position. Um, but then you stop rewarding them. And that's the extinction phase. So at some point, it doesn't matter. They can they can press all they want. They're not getting a reward. And this is the the kind of funny thing: the, the fixed interval uh, and the fixed ratio. In both of these fixed conditions, the animal doesn't know at first it's not getting a reward. So it's reward. It's going getting really. Let, let's do the interval. This is the dumb boss again, right? So your boss isn't coming out. He's not coming out. But but it's the half hour, and so so you start working like heck because he might come out. But then he doesn't come out. And you're like, okay, and maybe start working like heck, and he doesn't come out. And, and so after a while, you just stop responding um, because you're, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, if you're working when he comes out, you're not going to get rewarded. Fixed ratio, uh, yeah, I mean, same idea with a fixed ratio. If it's supposed to be, and this is really strong, if you're supposed to get a reward, say, every 10th press, um, but then you get to 10 presses and you get no reward. So you do another 10, no reward. You start to fall off. So that's the idea that responding slows here. But the ones most resistant to extinction are the variable ones again, and especially the variable ratio. So let's think about, let's focus in on the variable ratio and get the whole story for that because that's what I want you to get. Let's go, let's start over here again. When you're learning, when you are getting rewarded, and you think that reward's just around the corner. Um, and so you wait for it, wait for it, and eventually you do get it. 
And then sometimes you get it right away, but sometimes you have to wait a little longer. You're never quite sure, but if you keep chasing it, you do get it. And, and so that's good. And you end up like really chasing it at that. That's the condition that makes you, you know, most vigorously behave. And then suddenly we stop reinforcing you. What this suggests is that um, you keep going for quite a while. Why would you do that? Well, because it was 10 plus or minus eight. You're, you're used to sometimes waiting till 18 before you got rewarded. Sometimes you got it after two or three. Sometimes you had to wait till 18. And, and so you're kind of used to not really knowing while always feeling that it's just around the corner. And so what that means is if they stop rewarding you totally, you keep going for quite a while. It is what's called very resistant to extinction. Um, uh, yeah. And, and, and so it's a very strong, it builds, it makes a, it creates a very powerful, powerful behavior. Um, yeah, well, let's bring this into addiction. Let's, let's make you, give you some concrete examples here. And let's start here. Um, gambling halls. Virtually every gambling hall, I mean, they started with a, like those one-armed bandits and stuff, uh, but they have a ton of machines like this. And, and if there's ever a real-life equivalent of a Skinner box, this is it. Uh, we have somebody sitting there watching a stimulus complex, choosing certain behaviors, and occasionally being rewarded. All, all we don't have is the electric ch shock chair. <laughs> we don't do that. Um, but these people play this game and every one of these games every one of these games works on the principle of variable ratio schedule of reinforcement that one we were talking about and it's not 10 plus or minus eight it's it's maybe you know 50 or 60 plays plus or minus 48 plays or something like that uh, because they want they would have they like cases where somebody presses a button and they're rewarded and first of all they make the reward obvious when this person wins even if they win very little money i don't know if it's yeah how, how much ever they win there's siren there's things going and sirens blasting and woo, winner winner you know that kind of thing <laughs> i don't know i just made that up um to tell everybody that that person was just rewarded for doing that, okay? That's, that's one sort of vicarious way everybody's feeling like, oh, was that reward just around the corner? It could happen, it happened to that person, right? Uh, but they also would love nothing more than that person to get a reward and just two, they only put in $2 more or whatever and they hit it and they get a reward again. And that tells everybody, whoa, that's possible, okay? Uh, and it's that possible stuff, but also mixed with the fact that sometimes they sit there for a long, long time um, before any sort of reward. So they end up pumping way more money in than they get out when they're rewarded, but they're still rewarded. You know, it might've cost them $100 for that $50 reward, but it still feels good. <laughs> You'll find out why in just a moment. Um, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, that's the, that's the kind of schedule of reinforcement they use because they know once people start playing, according to that, they play in a very strong way. They, it's exactly like the rat. It's the highest rate of engagement with the, with the um, engagement. Maybe in education, you could include variable rewards of certain kinds. Uh, anyway, that's just... Anyway, so, so variable reinforcement creates uh, this strong engagement and people get really attached to it. In fact, you know, just to give you a taste, you know, is this an addiction, would you say? Well, just to give you a taste, there is um, uh, frequent stories of people who end up peeing in their seat because they've been playing a game and they put a lot of money into it and they really have to go to the washroom but they can't stand the thought of walking away, having somebody else sit at their machine, put in a dollar and win. <laughs> There's no way. So it's almost like the longer they've gone without a reward, the stronger they feel that reward is right there. That's what random reinforcement does for you. Um, and so it really makes you want to stay at it. That's where it gets addictive. Okay. So... I have an addiction. <laughs> I want to say we all this this is this is more frequent than 
than we know. Uh, it happens at, at different levels all the time. So yeah, I have a Kijiji addiction. Um, I, I love the fact with guitars that I can trade them on Kijiji and I've been able to play so many different guitars and try so many different guitars by swapping them with other people. And, and so I've been, I've been rewarded for doing that, but it's random, man. Um, you know, sometimes I look through these ads, I look through these ads every day. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> I'm addicted, man. I look through them every day, and vast majority of the time, there's nothing there that's all that interesting. Nothing I certainly would want to trade or do anything with. But every now and then, there's something there. And even then, you know, a lot of the times I try for something and nothing works out. But every now and then, it actually results in a trade. Um, and again, that's that random reinforcement at all these different levels, making me think, oh, I remember that great trade I made, and there's another great trade right around the corner. I'm totally addicted to that. More generally, by the way, a lot of people are addicted to shopping. And it's the same thing. Occasionally, every now and then, they find that great thing that they love, or they got this great deal, but it's random. They never know when it's gonna come. It feels like it's right around the corner. Um, those of you who've been watching the U.S. election results <laughs> know that, which is still not, while I'm taping this for you right now, still not fully over. Um, we've been waiting for votes to come in so we know what's going on, but what, what do they cut? They're coming in at a random, well, in that case, random interval, variable interval. Right, we never know when they're going to come in, so that's not a ratio. It's not about. It's a good example of a, a, a random interval, actually, variable interval. Um, but at some time, they're going to be released, and we never know what time, and so we want to stay engaged with the news so that we're there when they are released. Um, this is what a psychological addiction is. Now, it's not just mental. Well, I mean, it's mental. It's something in your brain, and there's a really interesting thing. To, to learn about this. So some people think dopamine is, when dopamine is released, you feel happy, and that's true. But they think of things like, um, if you have an addiction of some sort, like let's, let's pick on the shopping addiction, okay? Let's pick on me, we'll pick on me, um, looking for that next amazing guitar, whatever. And, and if I'm on this trail, if I feel like um, hey, this could lead to me getting some, some great guitar down the road. Um, you, you know when the most dopamine is released? Not when I get the guitar. Not when I get the guitar. When I'm thinking about getting the guitar. It is literally the thrill of the chase. So you shopaholics will probably feel this too. You know, when is it most exciting? Is it when you actually find that thing or get that deal? No, it's looking for it, right? And in fact, it's better when you're not even sure it's there. You're not even sure you're ever going to find it. Uh, so when you maybe get a reward, there's a chance of getting a reward. That's the variable ratio. That's when this dopamine is released and, and, and you feel really good. This is the key to psychological addictions, things that produce psychological addictions. A lot of addictions um, are all about the release of dopamine. And that's as true of a psychological addiction um, as it is for anything else. Pretty cool, huh? And that brings us, of course, to society's shared addiction. Um, there, there is a, a documentary on Netflix, The Social Dilemma. I have not yet watched it, but I've been told by a lot of people this is this is what it focuses on. So, you know, watch that if you want an, uh, another hit of this. But the core thing is, you know, why have, have all of us, like, how far is your cell phone from you right now? Literally, like, how far is it? If it's out of your reach, I'll be surprised. Like mine's right here. I don't even mean for it to be, but it is. It's always right here. It's 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 somewhere handy um, at, at all times. How the heck did these devices that we never even had when I was young, um, how did they become attached to every one of us at almost all times? Like no other device in the world, they use random reinforcement often you know uh, combined with notifications that involve intention orienting devices you know you don't know when some post that you did is going to be liked or is going to be shared um or you know uh, on on kijiji if i've posted an ad i don't know when someone's going to respond to my ad everything that happens on these devices happens according to some sort of random interval or random schedule 
And, and so we have this feeling that if we haven't checked our phone for a while, there could be a really critical email slash like slash social media outreach slash whatever. Something might have happened in our digital lives uh, because it happens now and then. And, and often it's boring, but now and then it's really kind of cool. Uh, and something really important happens. Those are the real rewarding ones, but they happen really randomly, but it could be happening now. It hasn't happened for a while, so it might be just around the corner. It's all the same, uh, all the same process, and it's the same basic key, random reinforcement, variable reinforcement. I'm using the words random and variable. I'm used to calling it random. Textbook calls it variable, so I'm trying to key in there, okay? So, you know, if you wanna learn more about this, this is the Internet Family Addictions Test for Families. Uh, sorry, Internet Addiction Test for Families um, by Kimberly Young. Uh, fairly well-known way of sort of gauging this. This is the one I pushed you guys to. So there was a student in one of my courses on Coursera who built out that little data measuring device. And he asked you, these were things, these were the sorts of questions um, that you were asked. Um, and don't worry, this is a, a factor, factor loadings from a regression analysis. Don't worry about the stuff on the right. Um, but these are the sorts of questions you were asked. And, and um, well, what the heck? Worry about the things on the right. Why, why, would I, why would I throw an opportunity to expose you to something in advance? You know, this, this isn't critical, but I want you to kind of see something. They asked you all these questions. And they've clustered these in groups because what this means is people who, who answered this question highly, do you find yourself saying just a, a few minutes went online, uh, people who were very likely to endorse that were also very likely to endorse these ones. So there was a correlation in the answers. So this is a fancy statistical technique that groups things and says, you know what, all of these questions seem to have something in common. And all of these questions seem to have something in common. So we start saying there's factors underlying here. And you can start to tease apart what an internet addiction really is by looking at the factors underneath it. Now I wish I had shown you what those factors are. But you can find out online if you, if you poke around a little bit. Uh, but this was the kind of questions. And these questions are ones typical of all addictions, biological and psychological. Um, uh, so this one's much more about, about the internet uh, here, but this idea of do you lose sleep due to late night login? No, that's more pre internet. Is, isn't there something like if you didn't have access to it, it's all you think about? Something like that. This one is so specific that it's a little different than that. Anyway, you get the idea. And by the way, I just heard my dog outside the door and it's time to feed her Miss Lola. So I'm going to wrap up just by showing you this uh, really quickly. These are your scores uh, for those of you who went and did that test. And when you take these scores and you break them down into proportions, this is what we found for our class, that most of you have what was considered a mild internet addiction. Some of you have a moderate. I think, it, I think that's some of the 30, I don't know where exactly the cutoff is, uh, but quite a few have a moderate. That, um, or actually not many have a moderate. So it's probably 25 and above is moderate, something like that. But then a lot of you, well, not a lot of you, but a pretty good chunk of you have a severe internet addiction. What was your score on that? Think about it. There you go. That's psychological addictions for you. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I am going to shut down for there. Um, I think I've got a, uh, I think I've got something more for you waiting below. Um, trying to think where I'm going next. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks, guys. Uh, chat with you soon. Bye-bye.